Hey everyone, uh, so today I want to do some more macro Bitcoin analysis, looking at market cipher and looking at some significant support resistance levels, also seeing if there's any confluence with some of my spider lines to basically look for the most macro levels. But uh, first I want to talk about some of the things we're seeing on market cipher because we're seeing some uh, mixed signals right now for sure. So first off, on the weekly time frame, we do have a bullish divergence with the momentum waves. Right now, we just printed this, uh, you know, green dot not too long ago. And uh, with candle bodies and wicks, um, you know, we got a bullish divergence here. So once this uh, green dot confirms, basically, when this week closes in like five days, this will be a confirmed bullish divergence. And we haven't seen a bullish divergence on the weekly time frame in a very long time. Um, well, actually, we did technically have one right here if you're going by the uh, candle bodies. And that one basically did nothing. I mean, we got a little pump right here. But uh, yeah, that one didn't lead to much. And considering the fact that the money flow is still trending downwards, we actually just got, you know, a, a big move down in the weekly money flow here. I'm kind of thinking that we may see something similar. Maybe we see like, you know, a little move up, but ultimately, uh, I don't think this weekly bullish divergence is going to mean much. If, uh, you know, this momentum wave starts moving to the downside again, that green dot could very easily disappear. But, you know, something to keep in mind is that we are forming some weekly bullish divergences. If you look at the three-day time frame, you kind of see a different story here. You can see money flow trending upwards after being very thick in the red. You see uh, momentum waves trending upwards. We even, looks like we might have confirmed this bullish divergence. Yeah, we did because we uh, printed a candle after that green dot printed so confirmed bullish div on the three day time frame with the money flow increasing so the three days looking you know more bullish i'd say than the weekly um the two day is kind of a similar story but you know you can see the money flow was increasing we got a little bit in the green here and now it's looking like it's turning to the downside and uh you know remember what crypto face said in the bull market the money flow stays in the green for a very long time goes into the red very quickly this is the opportunity to buy basically and then it pops right back into the green it is you know large in the green small in the red you can kind of see this better if you like go down to some of the time frames like the daily uh you know you can see we peaked into the red right there peaked into the red right there and uh you know during the bull market, we didn't spend very much time in the red. We spent most of our time in the green. But in the bear market, it is different. We spend a long time in the red, then a little bit of time in the green, followed by a long time in the red, typically. So even though, you know, the momentum waves are, you know, diverging slightly, even though it seems like on a three-day, money flow is increasing, basically because we're in a bear market, um, you know, you would expect that if we see green at all, if we see a move up, it is, you know, not going to be sustainable. And now let's take a look at the daily time frame because something very interesting and potentially very bearish is, uh, you know, happening right here. So remember before we got this dump that uh, broke us down out of this range, we formed one of the most bearish looking divergences on the daily time frame while coming into a significant level i believe it was a golden pocket yep golden pocket with extremely bearish divergence on the daily time frame and we got a very large move to the downside after that obviously now if you look at the daily momentum wave you can see that it seems like we're about to print a trigger wave to this anchor wave up here this anchor wave that had the bearish divergence and the money flow is continuing to trend downwards so this could 
potentially be a very bearish trigger wave that we're about to print here and it looks like we uh you know may print it soon possibly today and you know this could definitely lead to some more downside here so i'd say the daily time frame right now is looking pretty bearish and i'd say we're seeing you know a similar thing here on the 12 hour we had the bearish divergence there this was technically a trigger wave to this anchor wave but this uh wave that we're forming right over here is also technically a trigger wave to this anchor wave and we have printed the red dot on the 12 hour so yeah overall i think this could potentially be uh pretty bearish here um some of the you know medium term time frames are looking i'd say a little uncertain you know they could turn bullish uh the four hour momentum waves and money flow are still technically in an uptrend right now so if this uh momentum wave bottoms out right here maybe we could see another push to the upside um maybe that's when we start forming the uh bearish divs here and sort of start reversing this trend of the four hour momentum waves and money flow sort of start a downtrend with them or maybe we just uh you know continue up with them maybe this uh momentum wave makes another higher high maybe we keep on pumping up i think that's still a possibility you know i'm not uh counting that out as a possibility um but just based on some of the higher time frames specifically the money flow and you know what we know about bear markets how the money flow typically goes in the green for a little bit and then dips in the red for a long time um i think we could potentially be seeing that on the four hour as well you know we got very deep money flow in the red a little bit in the green maybe that's uh a sign that says it's going to start dipping back into the red soon but again we do have potentially some bullish looking signs on the high high time frames we haven't seen a weekly bullish divergence like this in a very long time in fact it looks like the last time we saw this was corona dump um we did have you know a hidden bullish divergence right here but we haven't seen a regular bullish divergence on the weekly time frame since march of 2020 so so you know you have to keep that in mind but overall i'd say more of the time frames are pointing bearish than bullish all right so now i'm just going to start marking out some macro levels of support and resistance and basically when i'm doing that i just want to see an area that has held lots of resistance and support in the past and uh right here is a pretty good example you know we held some support on it right there held resistance on it right there we kind of broke above this level but then when we came back down we uh held resistance on it there we actually you know kind of held support on it right in that area resistance uh resistance and then support right before we broke out so i'd say this nine thousand nine hundred dollar level is a uh, one of the more significant levels to the downside that i'd be watching just based on all the support and resistance that we've held on it in the past and you know this little retest right before the bull market i think this level is looking pretty juicy right there you could say somewhere in this area um it's not as clear you know you could probably move that uh that level up or down a little bit but uh yeah i'd say this this right here is looking like a pretty solid support resistance level we got support right there um kind of support in this area but i don't know if i'd call that necessarily support but we did find resistance right before we dumped down to put in you know the bear market lows then when we broke back above it came back down and tested it as support um kind of hovered around it right there but you know i'd say these are the most significant support and resistance tests on this level and uh that is coming in at 6560 ish you know like i said you can probably move it up or down a little bit this is more of like probably a zone of support and resistance right in this area and i may even mark out this area right here yeah i'd say 4680 is also a solid support and resistance level we had resistance right here found resistance on this area before we broke 
out of it and basically put in the uh, bear uh, bull market highs. So, you know, that was resistance before a breakout. And then as we come down to this level, we actually come up and test it as resistance right there. Um, we closed the weekly candle right at this level. We wicked above it, but then closed the weekly candle right at this level. And then later in March of 2020, we came down and tested this area for support. So yeah, you can make the case that this is also a significant support resistance level. Yeah, these are definitely some, uh, you know, pretty frightening targets, if I do say so myself. Um, if we came down to these, it'd be anywhere between a 40 to 70 percent dump from current prices but it is a bear market after all and uh devastating things can happen in bear markets so i think you have to be ready for the possibility but uh here let's take some volume of this little zone right here and that is interesting right there the point of control is lining up Perfectly almost with uh, that level that I marked out right there at like 6,500. So that is some interesting confluence right there. The value area low is coming in right around this level that I marked right there. So this could be a significant zone. And I guess this level is coming in around the uh, value area high. It's a pretty big zone right there. But, you know, you could even make the case that uh, this right here is a significant level um actually let's see did we find some support on this level over here because if we did that could actually be pretty juicy um well you could say that we found resistance support right there Potential support right here because we had a large wick down below it and then the uh, candle body came back up and closed above it. But that's iffy. But then we did find clear resistance right there. And if we come over here, we had resistance here, resistance here. So yeah, I'd say this 11,700-ish level is also a you know very significant level of support resistance. And... This one lines up much better with the value area high. And I know 12k is, you know, some people's targets. And if I turn on my spider lines, you can see we do have a spider line coming in right around this 12k level. So this is actually looking pretty juicy. We got the value area high of the bear market range, this significant level, and a spider line coming in right in this area right here. And, uh, you know, we could come down and hit that. In early to mid 2023 and uh you know yeah that's a potential scenario right there after that the spider lines aren't lining up too nicely with my support resistance levels so yeah i mean it's hard to say so far in advance but pretty much any of these levels uh have the potential to be the bottom i'd say and uh it all depends on really what we see when we go down there and uh you know of course significant levels to the upside would probably be this uh, retest at 30k of previous significant support um, but it is seeming less and less likely that we're actually going to make our way up there now um, I mean it's still possible with this weekly bull div but money flow wise and you know looking at some of the other time frames it's seeming less likely now especially since you know we still have to break into this old range that we broke out of so you know we still have the 18k ish resistance that we have to get through and you know we still have very significant resistance above us we also have you know the macro value area low lining up pretty much right with uh these lows this potential back test of previous support into new resistance so you know it's hard to say things are looking very uncertain but just based on you know, the conditions that the market is in, the bear market, and, um, you know, some of the signs that I'm seeing money flow-wise, I'd say it's looking more and more likely that we're going to hit some of these targets to the downside. But anyways, I think that's all I wanted to go over today. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Really appreciate the support. 
and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace.